to science lab the signs are happening because jesus is coming before the break i asked you the trivial question of the day which is the hottest city in the world options are option a lagos nigeria option b chennai india and option c dubai uae the answer is option a lagos nigeria according to worldatlas.com so the hottest city in the world is lagos 33.2 degrees celsius Second is Havas Hiran 37.3 degrees Celsius. Third is Athens Greece 28.7 degrees Celsius. Fourth is Fortaleza Brazil 27.2 degrees Celsius and fifth is Darwin Australia 29.3 degrees Celsius. Lagos is the largest city in Africa, one of the fastest growing city in the world. Lagos is the chief financial center of Africa. and home to the biggest and largest port in Africa. Lagos has tropical savanna climate with significant precipitation, difference between the dry and the wet season. Since the city is near the equator, the temperature in Lagos is consistent throughout the year. The warmest month in the city is February, averaging at 33.2 degrees Celsius, and the coolest is July, averaging at 28.2 degrees Celsius. The annual average temperature of the city registered is 30.8 degrees Celsius. The wettest month in the city is June, while the driest is January. As weather extremes get worse, there is an urgent need to better connect the threat of climate change to ordinary people. For decades, climate scientists have been worrying about the severe impact of the climate change from more extreme heat waves, longer droughts and wider storms to the disruption of food supplies, when the displacement of millions of people. Yet, despite calls that began years ago for deep cuts in carbon dioxide emissions, those emissions keep growing, fueling wider swings in the weather. Dr. Gene Frankios Bestin from ETH Zurich University said, "If you think about 1 degree Celsius, 1.5 degree Celsius or 2 degree Celsius, it doesn't give you a good grasp of what climate change is all about." He is the lead author of the Nobel study published earlier this month that compared the current climate of hundreds of cities globally and predicted climate for each of them in 2050. The idea was to create city pairing. For example, the climate of London in 2050 will be more like Barcelona's today, while that of Paris will be like Cranberry's now. Dr. Bestelli, an ecologist and geographer who studies how climate change affect ecosystem, said, "Using cities as a proxy to study climate change give you a nice way to summarize what is going to happen, even if you need to consider all the limitations involved in the data that we used." Dr. Bestin said he got the idea for the study a year ago. He was back home from Brussels during an intensely hot summer and felt very stressed by successive weeks of extreme heat. He wanted to find a way to better communicate how climate change affects people. Dr. Bestin said it's about 30 years more or less that most scientists agreed that the climate is changing because of the human activities but this is as but there is still a lack of big both political actions to try to change the way we are living on the planet so i think communication is the key if we manage to communicate to the people directly the people might put pressure on the politicians to take the right decisions pressure is already growing from the world's youth who have been staging huge climate marches demanding that government act to slash greenhouse gas emissions by switching to greener energy. Dr. Bastin said, if we continue to provide information to those guys in the streets to give them more leverage, maybe something will happen. 
some media and climate scientists have also been calling for climate change to be described as an emergency. In early 2019, British members of the parliament approved a motion to declare an environment and climate emergency. Though the government did not officially declare one, the Canada's parliament has also passed a motion to declare a national climate emergency. The Guardian newspaper has also updated its style guide since May 2019. Instead of climate change, the preferred terms are climate emergency, crisis or breakdown, and global heating is favored over global warming. Climate scientists welcomed the study for its ambition, but some felt it was too simplistic. Dr. Winston Chow, Associate Professor of Humanities at Singapore Management University said, the climate data might not be representative of the actual city level climate that they are trying to model in 2050. To get a more accurate picture of the future temperature and rainfall changes, he said, the researchers should account for the regional climate impact, for example, of the El Nino weather pattern that affects seasonal rainfall. He also said that the impact of the local built environment should be taken into account, for instance, the construction of roads and buildings that trap more heat and increase temperature over time. The models that the researchers use could also underestimate future changes, Dr. Chow added. Lefbro University's professor Robert Wolby, an expert in hydroclimatic modeling, said that pairing cities in this way was a clever idea. He wrote in a commentary for the Conversation website, but such like-for-like -like comparisons are just too simplistic. This is because cities make their own climate according to their unique layouts building materials, artificial head sources, amounts of open or green spaces, and types of water features. Dr. Bestin agreed that the study was simplistic by design. The method we have applied to this visualization is very simple. This is what I was looking for, the most simple way to communicate about climate change. But he said the computer models that his term had used to predict city climates in 2050 included many parameters mentioned by other climate scientists. He added, so I believe that most of the concerns expressed by the colleagues are covered. It's been 30 years more or less that most scientists agree that the climate is changing because of human activities. But there is still a lack or big, bold political action to try to change the way we are living. If we manage to communicate to the population directly, the population might pin pressure on the politicians to take the right decision. Revelation chapter 16 verse 8 and 9 says, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. The climatic changes may seem like a natural phenomenon, but it is not. It is an end time sign. What was foretold in the Bible is happening right now. All this shows us that indeed we are living in the last days. Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again very soon. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to tune in to Science Lab next time. Remember, signs are happening because Lord Jesus is coming. Marana. Marana.